We have some breaking news out of the Arizona Coyotes organization. Craig Morgan is reporting that the new arena deal in Tempe might be failing. It may not be happening after all. We'll discuss all the latest on this situation coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have some pretty substantial news on the Arizona Coyotes and their attempt at a new arena deal to remain in the state of Arizona. The Coyotes beat writer Craig Morgan has just issued a new article here in the last little while with a lot of new updates here. Uh, we could get further updates by the sounds of things probably later in this week, but things apparently are not looking overly promising for the Tempe Arena deal to end up getting approved. So we're going to take a look here at the article, kind of read through a lot of the main points of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing for us. Uh, it is rather lengthy. Uh, and then we'll kind of go over the highlights here and talk about some of the concerns that appear to be happening and what else we might be hearing here as well. Uh, clearly, if this doesn't work out, you have to wonder what's going to happen. They, they can't play in Glendale Beyond the, the current season, we already had a situation not long before Christmas where they could have been locked out of the arena because they were severely behind on lease payments and uh, you know taxes and other things. So certainly, you know that relationship is, is certainly damaged for sure. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about relocation if this doesn't work out. Although we don't really hear that coming directly from the NHL as of yet. You have to wonder if the Tempe Arena deal falls through, if they really need to more seriously look at that as a real possibility. Where could they end up? It's hard to say. I know a lot of people peg Houston as being the most likely, but you know there's some issues there as well, which it's not a guarantee by any means. So let's jump in here to the article and kind of read through some of the highlights and key points that is causing this here to have uh, you know potential failure written on it. So the article opens by saying the Coyotes' hopes for building a $1.7 billion arena and entertainment district in Tempe are teetering on a razor's edge. Two sources with knowledge of the situation said the Coyotes do not currently have the votes in the Tempe City Council to approve the project and move forward. Per these sources, there are three yes votes, two no votes, and two votes that are undecided but more leaning towards no after the Coyotes' recent failure to pay taxes and bills came to light the coyotes certainly aren't doing themselves any favor with the negative news stories one source said i would imagine if another negative story comes up on owner alex marullo or the organization or their business practices it will probably die those stories hurt tremendously on september the 2nd the city of tempe reported that the coyotes were the only group to support submit a proposal in response to its request for proposals and a project incorporating a professional sports franchise and entertainment district for two parcels of city-owned land totaling 46 acres at the northeast corner of Priest Drive and Rio Salado Parkway. The Tempe City Council has been mum on its opinion on the proposal and a potential date for a vote on that proposal. The city's official response to all media inquiries since receiving the proposal has been a version of the same thing. Proponents of the deal note that the project is essentially a free entertainment district that would generate jobs and millions of dollars for the city, while a portion of the city's sales tax revenue generated by the site would be used to pay $200 million in additional costs. That revenue clearly would not exist without the development. Proponents worry that if the deal is turned down, the Coyotes could possibly pursue a deal in the nearby Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. It would be right on Tempe's border, so Tempe would get all the problems, including traffic, but get none of the revenue, a source said. Opponents wonder about the financing of the deal. While the Coyotes have said that the deal would be privately financed, there is no indication who their investors are or how solid that financing is. Recent stories have suggested that the site's Proximity to Sky Harbor International Airport completed with the height of some structures could pose a problem, but multiple sources believe that the airport concerns are really a non-issue, and many suggesting that opponents, such as the City of Phoenix, are using it to kill the deal because that development would be direct competition with downtown Phoenix. The land site in question for the development was previously used as a sand and gravel mining operation and a dump. It would require an estimated $70 million in remediation costs. The Coyotes have proposed to pay $40 million for the eastern parcel to cover the portion of the remediation costs, but their willingness to pay the entire cost might be enough to sway the council 
said one source. So obviously that's a big part there. If they're willing to pony up an extra $30 million to cover the whole cost, that could get them an extra vote or two, which might be enough to, uh, to get this deal approved. However, while a number of Coyotes fan groups were actively involved when the city of Glendale was set to vote on an arena lease agreement with the Coyotes in 2013, few citizen groups have come out in support of the Tempe proposal. That might be changing. A group of Coyotes fans began mobilizing last week with plans to voice their support of the proposal. The next Tempe City Council meeting is set for Thursday at 5 p.m. So will we get an actual vote Thursday at 5 p.m.? It doesn't really, you know, explicitly say that. Like I said, the city of Tempe um, has kind of been really unclear on exactly when they're going to vote. But essentially here, they have to get enough city council members on their side to uh, to vote yes, to move ahead with the project. Right now, they do not have those votes. And a big part of that, uh, the two main things really based on this article is, one, obviously the negative publicity they recently took by not being able to pay their bills in Glendale and being behind on the taxes and lease payments. That's a really, really, really bad look for the team, the organization, the owners. And certainly, like, you know, that would give them hesitation. And the other big thing that I've personally raised concerns about and questions when I've talked about this in prior videos is the private financing part of it for the entire project. It's $1.7 billion. It's a lot of money. And for a team who can't pay its bills, how are they going to do this? Now, on prior videos, I've seen numerous comments from Coyotes fans saying, uh, don't worry, it's privately funded. It's, it's, nobody seems to be overly concerned here. But just because you can say and propose and do all these things, like I said before, when it comes time to pony up and prove it, that's a completely different animal. And it doesn't mean that they're actually going to be able to do it. As if they can go through this proposal, make things look good. And what if... They don't have everything lined up. Like I'm assuming Tempe here and anybody that they would possibly do business with would require a lot of this proof up front before they get to go ahead. But still, like it's it's one thing to say something and put together a package proposal. It's another to back it up and have the resources and actual uh, you know equity to get it done. Clearly, if there's really no clear indications on who the private finances or investors are for the private financing, Really, like, yeah, it's great that they're not asking the city for money uh, and taxpayer money, but where is the money coming from? I mean, like, clearly it doesn't sound like this team has just been struggling. It's been bleeding money. They can't pay their bills. They've, they suddenly have due to human errors with the excuse, uh, an unfortunate error. They didn't pay like taxes and lease agreements for like 17 months. Like, come on, give us a break here. This is a team that's incredibly unstable, looking to go into a project for you know nearly $2 billion of private financing. I've had my doubts and my concerns all along just because of the history. Like, unfortunately, when it comes to certain groups and certain people, like you need to see more proof in the pudding before you kind of believe what they're telling you. And this team has struggled so much with their bills, it's just hard to imagine that they could get this done. Now, the question though remains is if it falls through, what happens next? Now, I mentioned about a potential proposal and discussions with a very close nearby community that borders Tempe. I mean, that's another possibility, but then they're kind of starting all over again. Uh, so we have another number of months that would have to likely go by before they would you know, discuss with them about a potential project, submit a package, wait for it to be reviewed. Like that's, a, again, another long process. And that's a big part of the problem here is they don't have time on their side. We're already into January. We're only looking at, because the Coyotes we know are not going to likely be making the playoffs here. They're, you know, near the bottom of the NHL. Their, their NHL season is going to be over in like three months or so. And they don't know where they're going to play next year. That's not a lot of time. I mean, they need to have time, uh, of course, uh, beyond that for NHL scheduling to be done up and everything else. There's a lot of planning that goes into the season ahead. They don't have until September, October before the season starts to know where they're going next year. Um, you know, is there a possibility they could pull off a one year extension with Gila River Arena and stay in Glendale? I mean, maybe but it really seems doubtful like it seems like the city of glendale really doesn't want anything to do with them anymore especially i mean i know they were pleased with how they did come forth and pay the bills once they went public and 
And, uh, you know, they were going to be getting possibly locked out of the arena, but they shouldn't have come to that. That's the problem. And, you know, the other thing, too, is over the next number of months leading into the end of the year, will they hold up their end of the bargain to pay everything on time ahead of schedule like they're supposed to? Uh, Because that was part of the agreement as well. Like, there's a lot of moving parts here. And I know a lot of people are going to probably comment, just move them to Houston already. But there's more to it than that as well. I've seen some reports saying that uh, Rockets owner Tillman Fertitta, who was apparently showed interest before in bringing the team to Houston, doesn't necessarily want to own the team from what I've heard. Uh, Obviously, he's got the the, uh, space and the, uh, the location, the arena, but he may not want to own the team. He might just want to have another tenant there. So it looks like there might need to be an, like a, a separate owner. I'm not sure. I mean, there's different rumblings out there, but it's not as simple as just sending them to Houston. That's a completely different story. I mean, I know really, I'm not sure where else they would really go if the NHL wants to keep their, you know, systems and the way they are with the Eastern and Western Conference finally being even after all these years. I know Quebec, uh, there's a big argument there because they have the arena um, and they, they have the support. I don't care the fact that Quebec City is a small market. I know that that arena would be full every night. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, the Quebec government recently has been talking about it. We know there's meetings between Quebec City and uh, the NHL coming up here uh, in the not too distant future. Um, obviously, at that point, you know, when that was, what made, was made public, there was really no indication it was going to be about this or anything like that it's just the fact that they really would want to get a team back and i think they want to meet with uh batman and daily just to kind of get the ball rolling and kind of you know put some feelers out there but they have some financing um solutions in place to make it a little bit more doable for them considering the rising cost of a franchise in the nhl now too so it's not as simple as just sending them there either as much as they probably would be arguably more ready but still can they find like we talked about before there's other you know, smaller venues in the area they might be able to play at temporarily, but does it make sense to do that if there's, there's no long-term vision? Like, where are they going to go? Like, this is not a good news story. Like I'd, so I talked about before about the fact that there, we had heard rumblings that things weren't going well, but we really didn't know what the issues were. Now we obviously have a, a little bit better idea, but clearly the, the, the last Coyotes, uh, you know, news before Christmas was really bad publicity and that certainly did not do anything to help their cause whatsoever. A lot of it's about character and credibility, and they lacked it big time right now. So we'll see. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do they get this figured out? Do they somehow get the votes? It doesn't look good. And if this falls through, what happens next? Where do they go? Let me know what your thoughts down below in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>